I graduated in 1996 from the National University of Ireland, uh, completing my medical basic degree at that time. I then worked in Ireland for about one year, moved across to England and completed my postgraduate studies. I did my MRCP, or Member of the Royal College of Physicians, exams and specialized in internal medicine and subsequently started training in cardiology in England and in London as well. I did some of that training overseas but returned to Singapore, which is my home, and completed some of that training in the National Heart Centre in Singapore. I subsequently moved from National Heart Centre where I worked as a consultant and I moved over to Tan Tok Seng Hospital where we started up the 24-hour um, interventional service, which is a service for patients who have heart attacks who come in and need urgent treatment to save their lives. I worked there for a number of years and during the course of that time went overseas to do what we call the Higher Manpower Development Program Training. It is a scholarship given by the government of Singapore to people when they've achieved a certain level in their field to go overseas, learn new techniques and bring them back to Singapore and then develop these in our local setting. I was in Germany for one year. During the course of that time, I had to learn how to speak German as well. I am an interventional cardiologist. In my practice, I see a broad spectrum of cardiac diseases. We see diseases ranging from blockages in the heart arteries, to problems with the heart valves, to problems of the heart muscle, and other disorders associated with it. But within cardiology itself, my subspecialty is dealing with blockages in the heart arteries. This happens due to high cholesterol, genetic factors, etc., and result in significant impairment of lifestyle for a lot of patients and also risk to their lives. So what we do is we do a procedure called an angiogram and angioplasty. An angiogram involves passing a little tube up the groin area here in the arteries or from the hand up into the heart, injecting dye, looking to see where the blockages are, and then afterwards passing a wire and over it a balloon and finally a stent to open that area up, thereby opening up the artery and restoring flow to the heart muscle in that area. This often relieves symptoms for the patient and saves lives in situations where there has been a heart attack. Most of the angioplasty in the past has always been done from a groin approach. I and my team now specialize in the approach from the arm using the radial approach, a small artery in the arm, where we pass a tube up the arm and do this procedure through a minimally invasive cut in the wrist area. This allows early mobilization for the patient and does not require a significantly longer hospital stay as we used to have before. At the same time, one of my other subspecialties is in a procedure called transcatheter aortic valve implantation. This is a treatment modality that we offer to patients who have a disease process called aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis is a blockage in the heart valve that doesn't allow flow from the heart out towards the whole body. Most patients who get this are older. In general, four to five percent of the population have this type of a problem. When this disease process becomes symptomatic, as they start getting symptoms from it, many patients do not survive beyond two years. They therefore need treatment for this. The well-known and well-established treatment is open heart surgery with aortic valve replacement, where the surgeon opens up the chest area puts a valve inside and thereby relieves the obstruction that the patient has in the blood flow to the rest of the body. One third of patients do not get this treatment because they're considered too high risk or because they're too elderly. In general, this one third of patients did not have a treatment option prior to this. With transcatheter aortic valve implantation or TAVI, we are able to treat this disease with a small incision or a poke the same way we do angiograms and angioplasty from the groin this time, passing a catheter up, putting a balloon into the disease valve and opening up that obstruction and finally putting in a stent-like device. In essence, this is similar to the aortic valve replacement that the surgeon does but without the general cut in the chest. We do this as a team. Our team comprises of a few cardiologists, and also a few cardiothoracic surgeons. I and another person, we are the co-directors of the valvular therapeutics program within the Parkway Heart and Vascular Center. And therefore, with our team, we are able to provide the service to our patients, where the patients can have a minimally invasive procedure 
for the aortic valve stenosis, which would otherwise impair their health, their lifestyle, and cause significant risk to their life. Although my subspecialty within cardiology is in these complex interventional procedures, the majority of patients we see in our clinics have general cardiology problems. They come in with shortness of breath, chest pain, and many of them are asymptomatic, but they come into us looking to see if they have a disease process and looking to see if they can have this treated before it becomes a major problem for them. My advice to all my patients is the same. Make sure you go for regular checkups when you can. Make sure you understand what the symptoms associated with heart disease are. In general, one should always look out for shortness of breath, chest pain, dizziness, palpitations, and generally feeling unwell when one exerts oneself. If you have any of these symptoms, you should seek medical help by seeing a cardiologist immediately. In addition, we also treat what we call the worried well, which is patients like myself, my friends, all of them come to us worried that they might have a heart problem. And they are right, because cardiovascular disease is the biggest killer worldwide in developed countries. Because we've changed our lifestyle, we have changed and skewed the bell curve that we have because of the differences in our lifestyle compared to our forefathers, the way we eat, the fact that we exercise less, the fact that we eat a lot of more fatty food. And we find that we have a very sedentary lifestyle as well. So as a result, heart disease is on the rise. When I say cardiovascular disease, I'm talking about heart disease and vascular disease because the vascular disease involves all the vessels elsewhere, including those supplying the brain. So what we do as a general rule is try to screen patients as early as possible. We tend to advocate an early screening for men and women because it is well established that there's a rising trend of heart disease amongst women these days as well. So it is not just the men, but the women who suffer from heart disease as well. So early screening, recognizing the symptoms as I said before, and then making the lifestyle changes that are necessary in addition to the medication and if necessary even the treatment options such as angioplasty or stenting that I've mentioned, these are the things that we all need to do. So I tell all my patients, first of all, make the change to your lifestyle, take the medicine if it's advised by your doctor, and as you move forward, make sure you have regular checkups to ensure that the disease process does not get worse.